Today I'm going to be looking at one smart signing that each Premier League club should make this summer. In front of me, as you can see, I've got 20 Premier League teams. Now, it's important to note I've removed Sheffield United and Burnley because they're confirmed as relegated. And I've added Ipswich and Leicester. It's important to note that when I say smart signings, I'm really talking about relative to that team. So, a smart signing for an Arsenal or a Man City could still be quite big money. Whereas some of the sides with a smaller budget, I've tried to approach this as such. All right, for Arsenal, we're going to start with... Benjamin Sesko. I still think that Arsenal need a midfielder. I also think they need another forward. Lots of chat that Gabriel Jesus could be sold this summer. And I've already talked about on past episodes, midfielders I think Arsenal should be interested in. The likes of Frankie de Jong, who Barcelona are reportedly looking to sell this summer. He would be ridiculous alongside Martin Erdegaard and Declan Rice. But I've spoken about them, and I think a smart bit of business for Arsenal would be to recruit a young striker who's versatile enough to play in a two, in a one, and anywhere across the front line that also has a release clause. Who fits that bill? Well, if you look across Europe, Benjamin Sesko stands out head and shoulders at just 20 years old above plenty of other strikers. Because right now, the number nine market is it's pretty poor. There's a dearth of high quality options there. And if you look back a few years ago, you probably said the same when Newcastle signed Alexander Isak. It was a bit of a risk at that fee, but it's turned out with massive upside. And I really believe Benjamin Sesko is the next player in that line similar sort of vibe to isaac similar sort of fee 65 million euro release clause in a few years time that could look like really good money because not only is he a goal scorer you go back to his salzburg days i think it was 20 goals and assists last season so far this season it's 15 goals and assists in 16 starts for leipzig in the bundesliga exceptional output for a 20 year old in one of europe's top five leagues in his debut season and he's really coming to his own towards the back end of the season. He is going to be, whether it's this summer or the summer after, one of the most high-profile striker transfers in Europe, whether that's to the Premier League, to Spain, to France, maybe to Bayern. And in my opinion, Arsenal should be at the front of that queue. It makes a lot of sense given his age profile and that 65 million euro release clause. Smart business all round. If they can get that deal done, maybe even structure it in a way that's kind to them and allow Gabriel Jesus to leave the club, Smart business for me. Newly champions leagueified Aston Villa up next. I still think the left-hand side of their back four needs a little bit of work. Alex Moreno this season has struggled. Luca Dean at times defensively looks a little bit suspect. So could they sign a player a little bit like an Esri Konza, who's versatile enough to not only play as a left-back but also a centre-back, offer a different way of playing so they can adjust to a back three and allow the right-back to go on? I think they can. And I think that player is Mario Hermoso. On a free transfer this summer, we've seen Aston Villa's directors work really effectively in the free transfer market with players like Bubakar Kamara, with players like Yuri Tielemans in recent years. And at 28 years old, leaving Atletico Madrid this summer, he represents excellent value in the market. He can play as a left back. He can also play as a left-sided centre back. He's really comfortable and composed on the ball, but also has that grittiness that Diego Simeone requires. As you can see, his numbers are slightly juiced because he has fullback minutes and numbers in a centre-back comparative position. So some of his pass numbers, his progressive carries, probably a little bit bumped up, but progressive pass numbers, excellent. Unai Emery demands that. Players like Paul Torres have really improved that side with his composure on the ball, and I think Hermoso would add to that as well. Unai Emery would have seen him up close and personal in Spain over a number of years. He's been an excellent servant to Atletico Madrid, and I think he'd be a really smart pickup for Aston Villa. Jumping to Bournemouth, who have had one of the most remarkable seasons of any side in the league. Uh, Iriola absolutely should be in with a shout of winning manager of the season. They've taken the fifth most points in the league since November. They're Bournemouth. But they do have a few question marks remaining over the goalkeeper position. You know, Neto is now 35 this month. They have to be thinking about who can replace them. We've seen Travers come in recently. I think four appearances for him so far this season. But still 31 starts for a 34-year-old Neto. So the player I think would be a smart pickup for them, to be honest, is Aaron Ramsdale. Now, there's plenty of chat about Aaron Ramsdale playing for a club higher up the table. We've seen Chelsea linked at times in the past. But Bournemouth are a progressive club, clearly looking to climb the table quickly. 
smart recruitment, smart managerial appointment, lots of money. And Aaron Ramsdale has a history at Bournemouth. Of course, he played for the club between 2017 and 2020. I think mean, back then they paid like 800 grand for him before he eventually left for Sheffield United. Was a really, really solid player there. Of course, picked up the Supporters Player of the Year award. This makes a lot of sense. He knows the club. He'd be playing every single week. I could imagine the fee not being as big and as heavy as some might report. Seen reports of £40 million Arsenal want for Ramsdale. I don't really see it. For me, it's much more realistic. We could see a deal being done in the region of £20 million, £20 to £25 million. If that's the case, Bournemouth should absolutely be all over this move. It would cover them in the long term. He's still only 26 years old. He's excellent with his feet, so could play in an Iriola system. I really think this would be a statement of intent for Bournemouth. In a week where Iriola has signed a new contract, if you go out and you say to him, we're going to get players like Aaron Ramsdale, it makes him want to stay. At Brentford, I think you've got to be looking for an Ivan Tony replacement. If we're being realistic here, he's going to leave the club this summer. And my suggestion is going to be linked to a future suggestion, but I wonder, is there a deal to be done for Brozier at Chelsea? Of course, he's had this failed move to Fulham. They paid £4 million for him to play barely any minutes because of the emergence of Muniz in the second half of the season. And Brozier's career has really been defined by that ACL injury. An excellent loan at Vitesse. He looked really sharp when he was at Southampton. Comes back to Chelsea in 2022 and suffers the ACL injury. Since then, his career has kind of spluttered and stuttered and not really progressed in the way some Chelsea fans, and I'm sure Armando Brogia, hoped it would. I think a new star at a team like Brentford would be an excellent move. He'd be getting plenty of minutes. They've got a track record of developing young, underrated players. Ivan Tony's leaving, so there's a space in the number nine role, and Thomas Frank is an excellent coach to work with. They're also based in London, so he probably wouldn't have to uproot his family, uproot where he lives. We saw Chelsea sell Callum Hudson-Odoi to Nottingham Forest for three million pounds. Now, I'm not saying Brozier's gonna go for that cheap, but in the region of 10 million, I think you could suggest would be a fair fee given that he hasn't played an awful lot of minutes this season under Pochettino. He didn't get any minutes on loan at Fulham this season either. Could be good business all round that one. At Brighton, I think they potentially need a defensive midfielder. There's been a lot asked of Billy Gilmore this season. He's played plenty of minutes. Belaber is still a young developing player and they never really replaced the defensive output of Moises Caicedo when he left the club. So the player I'm going to suggest as a smart pickup is Genoa midfielder Morton Friendrup. Now, when we look at his profile on the ball, leaves a little bit to be developed. But at 23 years old in a Genoa side that aren't exactly lighting the world alight in Italy, his defensive numbers continue to stack up in a huge way. Juventus and Milan both looking at him this coming summer, and it's easy to see why. Second in Europe's top five leagues, behind only Joao Polinia. The guy is extremely combative. He joined Genoa, I think, in 2022 for about 3 million euros. Reportedly, they want 20 million euros to let him go. Now, this would be a big statement signing for Brighton to compete with a Milan, to compete with a Juventus. But with the arrival of a player like Ansu Fati, they've proven they can go out and shock the market. Even though Fati hasn't really worked out, when he joined Brighton, everybody was like, what on earth? It appears now that Roberto De Zerbi is going to be staying. And if that's the case, you've really got to back him this coming summer. And you've got to back him with statement signings. I think Friendrup in the midfield would be a game changer. Okay, let's do Chelsea. Because earlier I spoke about Brozier going one way. I do think there could be a deal to be done involving Brozier and a bit of cash for Ivan Tony. Now, the reason I think Ivan Tony would be a smart pickup for Chelsea is that I actually think Nicholas Jackson has really developed well in the second half of the season. His goal scoring numbers continue to climb across the last 10 games. He's really upped his XG output to a new level. I wasn't sure that he was going to be able to do. So I don't know whether you need a massive name that comes in and usurps Jackson straight away. What I feel with Tony you get is somebody a little bit more experienced that could come in and play alongside Jackson. He would rotate with him. Jackson could learn from him because his goal scoring output historically, Tony, ever since 2018 has been amazing. I understand most of it was in the second tier, some of it in the third tier of English football, but that one season last season at Brentford in the Premier League 
was remarkable. And I really want to rewind the clock back to that season because this season hasn't worked for Tony. He had the ban, he came back, he's looked a bit leggy, he's had two injuries since then. He's got his four goals, but all round, it feels a little bit like a player who didn't have a preseason. With a new side, a fresh preseason, I expect Tony to again have a very solid campaign. And at Chelsea, it's not like we would have to see Tony score 25 goals. If he could provide 10 alongside Jackson providing 15 to 20 next season, taking another stride forward, because he's still only young, it would be a really smart pickup. Rewinding the clock back to his previous season at Brentford, these underlying numbers in terms of his final third are excellent. It would offer a different dynamic to the Chelsea front line as well, a little bit more direct, bit better back to goal play. I think Jackson's really neat in his link up, surprisingly, but back to goal leaves a little bit to be desired. Given that Tony's still only 28 years old as well, this one makes smart sense. There's reports in The Athletic saying that Brentford would be looking for about a £40 million fee. Could that be knocked down a little bit with Brozier? Could you go Brozier and £20 million? If that's the case, I think it'd be an amazing pickup. Crystal Palace flying under Oli Glasner. I absolutely loved the story this week of Steve Parrish telling Bayern Munich he wants 100 million euros for Glasner. That is so Steve Parrish. I love it. And given how they've set up recently with that back three, Nathaniel Klein playing as a right-sided centre-back because of Gahey's injury, I wonder if a little bit more cover could be utilised in that right centre-back role. And if that's the case... It looks like Luton are going to go down. I think Ted and Mengi would be a great pickup. Still only 22 years old, so I don't think demands starting every single game week in, week out. Plenty of room for growth in his career. What we've seen from him in his debut season this year in the Premier League since that move from Manchester United has been remarkable. He's been one of Luton's best players this season. He's got plenty more minutes than I thought he might since leaving Manchester United. He's excellent on the ball, super physical, reads the game really well. Interception numbers are extremely high. The issue for Palace is that we saw links in January to buy Leverkusen. They were very interested in him. If that's the case, you might struggle to compete. But with Oli Glasner there, there is a project being built. I think Ted M. Mengi would be very tempted by this move. Manchester United do have a sell-on fee percentage, so that might bump it up a little bit, but we're not talking 30-40 here, are we? We're talking 10 to 15 million pounds, I think, for Ted Mengi, which would be a great signing. At Everton, I still think they need a goal scorer. You know, Dominic Calvert-Lewin this season, top scorer, or joint top scorer with Decore on seven, but his XG is around 14. I think he's the biggest underperformer of XG of any striker in the Premier League. You've got Beto, who's only got three goals this season. That move really hasn't worked. Gets an XG of eight, I think. They also sold Ellis Sims, of course, for a reported £6 million to Coventry. He's gone on and scored 13 goals there. Was that the correct sale? <sighs> It's looking a bit ugly now. The striker I'm going to suggest that would be a smart signing, though, is Demirovic. He's playing for an Augsburg side that are mid-table. They're ninth in the league. But he's had another outstanding season. It's 24 goal involvements in 32 starts, 15 goals, 9 assists. His build-up play and link-up play is massively underrated. His goal scoring is excellent, performing at XG across his entire career. He's also still only 26 years old. He's under contract to 2026, so it wouldn't be the cheapest move, but Augsburg classically aren't huge sellers. Given Dominic Calvert-Lewin's injury record as well, this would be a smart bit of business for an Everton side that classically haven't done that. At Fulham, we've got the exit of Tosin to cover, really, haven't we? He's left on a free, he's not been involved in matchday squads. We've seen Bassi and Diop used at centre-back. Can they find value in the market in the centre-back role? I think there's plenty. And I'm going to suggest Sepp Vandenberg from Liverpool. He has had a remarkable season this year in Germany playing for Mainz. One of Mainz's, probably actually Mainz's player of the year. More minutes than any outfield player in the squad. Really good defensive numbers. He is a body in front of the ball defender. Now, he's not playing in a Mainz side that want to get on the ball. I think they're 16th in the league for possession this season. They're 15th in the league overall. 
It's not been their best campaign, but yet Sepp van den Berg has stood out. Now, he has a contract at Liverpool until 2026, so it's not going to be easy to get hold of him. But with the emergence of Jarrell Kwanzaa, you've got Canate and Van Dijk there, minutes are going to be limited again next season. Liverpool might be willing to cash in on him, and if that is the case, he would be a really smart pickup. He's still only 22 years old, plenty of room to develop, and if you could get him for the right fee, let's say, 10 to 15 million pounds he could be perfectly adept cover for a player as good as Tosin okay Ipswich fairly obvious one for me here I've kept it simple I've gone for bringing back Amari Hutchinson who's had an amazing season as you can see here in pretty much every facet of the game he has excelled for Ipswich we saw Kieran McKenna on the open top bus tour saying for his birthday he wants Amari Hutchinson back and it's pretty crucial to bring players like Hutchinson who have had such an effect on a side back to the club when you go up a division. It's something Burnley failed to do, and it really cost them, in my opinion. They went up with plenty of lone players in the side. Some of those lone players, they failed to bring back. Think of the likes of Ian Matson, for example. If it's which can bring back Amari Hutchinson, then they stand a much better chance of staying in the league. Likewise at Leicester, I'm going to suggest just bringing back Fatawu, who's been a revelation it's coming from Sporting on loan. This is going to be a much harder deal for Leicester to do than Ipswich bringing back Hutchinson because Fatawi's value and status has increased massively and we've seen players from the Championship go to Sporting and have huge impacts straight away. <laughs> Victor Jokeres. Do I think that's going to happen? Probably not. There is going to be an opportunity for this transfer to happen and if that opportunity is there, you've got to snatch it. 13 goals, 6 assists in 33 starts. Just awesome overperforming his xg overperforming his expected assists what more can you say other than he has had an amazing season for liverpool i'm going to suggest something a little bit rogue and that is manuel agate let's be honest for ourselves here lewis enrique don't fancy him he does not fancy him he's played 39 minutes total in psg's last six matches he hadn't even been in the squad for four of them and it's becoming more and more clear that george mendes would be willing to move him on in the summer. He's got seven clients at PSG, George Mendes. This feels like a little bit of a square peg in a round hole with how Luis Enrique wants to play football. With Fabian Ruiz in there, with Vitinha in there, with Zaire Emery in there, what you have got is a core of players excellent on the ball in possession. And because of PSG's dominance of the ball in the French League, they don't necessarily need a destroyer in the way Ugarte is. Because Ugarte's on-the-ball numbers are world-class. This is off-the-ball work that really stands out. And that off-the-ball work is just remarkable. Again, nearly seven tackles and interceptions per 90. When we go back to the Portuguese League, an astronomical number yet again. See what I mean about is on the ball. Tidy, but these progressive pass numbers, they aren't Fabio's, they aren't Vitinha, they aren't Zaire Emery. So he's potentially fourth choice. They paid a significant amount of money for him last summer. Would they be willing to move him on to find a player who fits into a Luis Enrique system just that little bit more? And given he's still only 23 years old and Liverpool do potentially need a long-term defensive midfield option. I know Stefan Bajetic is coming back from that injury, but Endo isn't the youngest, felt like a stopgap. Is Agate the long-term answer and could be purchased for a bit of a cut price fee because it hasn't worked at PSG? If that's the case, it would be a very smart move from all perspectives. At Luton, I'm going to suggest... Che Adams. This would be a difficult transfer to make happen because he's going to be available on a free transfer, so there's going to be plenty of clubs interested in his signature. I'm sure Che Adams thinks he can play Premier League football next season. But we've seen him in the Premier League and we've seen Everton linked with him in the past. I'm not sure how much clamour there will be straight off the bat for Che Adams from Premier League sides. But how much clamour there's going to be from championship, top level championship sides will be a lot. 16 championship goals again this season. If he doesn't want to sign a new contract to Southampton, could another top level championship team poach him? Could a low level Premier League team poach him? That's what Luton should be aiming for. More goals to add alongside Adebayo, add alongside Carlton Morris. Be a statement signing, wouldn't it? 
Manchester City, very difficult to find smart signings for them because their checkbook is pretty much unlimited and they always sign pretty well. Although last summer, some of the recruitment left a little bit to be desired. I don't think Nunes has really worked there. We've seen Calvin Phillips in the past, not really worked there. The player I'm going to suggest that I think would be a smart pickup has a big fee. But it is a release clause, which I think makes it a smart buy regardless, is Lucas Pekatar. What we see from his game is an extremely well-rounded profile. What we're going to see from City this summer, in my opinion, is Bernardo Silva exiting the club. He has a 50 million euro release clause, Bernardo, that becomes active this season. It feels like, a bit like Gundogan, they've kind of reached the end of that cycle. He maybe wants a fresh start. He's been a legend for City, a remarkable player. Could a player like Lucas Pekatar replace some of Bernardo Silva's output? Now, I'm aware they're slightly different profiles, and Bernardo at times has been utilized as a right winger, but Kevin De Bruyne is also not getting any younger. There's reports that he potentially, I doubt it, I highly doubt it, could be sold this summer. Pakatar with an 85 million euro release clause is one of the most outstanding midfielders in Europe. So when you combine all that, his combative nature, his pressing, his technical ability on the ball, his goals, his creation, and a release clause, it makes a lot of sense for Man City. For Manchester United, I did a whole video last week on picking their signing, and the player I'm about to talk about didn't even get mentioned, wasn't even a suggestion. But in the last seven days since that video, rumours have surfaced that PSG want to let Xavi Simmons go. And if that is the case, be it on loan, be it with an option to buy, an obligation to buy, or as a straight transfer, United have to be breaking their neck to get it done. Last summer, Fabrizio Romano, of course, was reporting that if Leipzig deal hadn't happened, United were first in the queue for him. For me, they should be the first in the queue for him again this year. We're talking across Europe's top five leagues. First, any player for carries into the final third. Sixth for shot creating actions. Eighth for dribbles completed. Thirteenth for chances created. Fifteenth for passing the box. He's got nine goals, 15 assists. He's a remarkable player. Anybody who's watched Xavi Simmons knows what he's about. He's a wizard. And people will be saying there's no way United can get Xavi Simmons. And I kind of understand where you're coming from there. But I liken this a little bit to when Arsenal managed to get Martin Erdegaard. They, of course, bought him in on loan. Then they managed to convince the player this was the right atmosphere and the right place for him. Real Madrid decided he wasn't right for them and a deal was eventually done. I understand fans don't want loan signings, but could United use that Erdegaard template to bring Xavi Simmons to the club? sell him on the project, build a little bit of a team around him. Quite why PSG are trying to get rid of a player with this calibre of output, with this calibre of talent, I don't really get. But clearly, the relationship behind the scenes has broken down at some level. And United have spaces for Xavi Simmons. For me, there's probably going to be space on that left-hand side. It's not a guarantee Marcus Rashford is still going to be at the club in the summer. Certainly not a guarantee Jadon Sancho is going to be at the club. Garnacho has actually done a lot of his best work on the right wing this season. The emergence of Ahmad on the right wing. And signing a player like Xavi for United means left wing cover, 10 cover, right wing cover, midfield cover. He's that good and that much of a Swiss army knife that he's just an absolute must get if he's on the market. Newcastle, let's keep this one fairly short and sweet because it looks like it's actually going to happen. I'm suggesting Tosin, Adarabio, they need more defensive cover. Lascelles has got the ACL injury. Fabian Shah has injury problems as well. Botman's had injury problems. Looks like Lloyd Kelly's coming in and Tosin, Adarabio on a free transfer. One of the best frees available in Europe. Six foot five, presence, good on the ball. Comes from good pedigree given he's Manchester City Academy player. So understands what it means to play on the ball, play out from the back. Smart, isn't it? At Nottingham Forest, I'm going to suggest Ben Johnson, who's actually also available on a free transfer from West Ham this coming summer. Of course, England under-21 youth international. Nottingham Forest have been playing Montiel recently at right back, as well as Nico Williams, who's kind of the more attacking option. Could Ben Johnson come in? Montiel's only on loan from Sevilla, isn't he? As the more defensive option in that right back slot. He can also play at centre-back. He can also play in defensive midfield. It would take a little bit to sell him on the project, I think. But with Nottingham Forest's well-documented financial issues, a free transfer like Ben Johnson 
is smart. As for Tottenham Hotspur, I'm suggesting Nico Williams, who of course has a 50 million euro release clause, which makes this one a smart bit of business. They are competing with teams like Barcelona, so it would be a statement signing. Still think they need cover on the left wing slot, but his overall game fits an Ange Postecoglou side really nicely. And we've seen this season Timo Werner since joining in January play 13 games. So clearly the minutes are there in that left wing slot. Song can also play as a number nine. So there's definitely going to be minutes in the number nine slot. An amazing progressive ball carrier, Nico Williams, a legend at Bilbao following the Copa del Rey win. Issues around his wages, which might mean this isn't as smart as you'd think. You know, the fee is really good. 50 million euros for Nico Williams when they spent 50 million euros on Brennan Johnson is a smart bit of business. That becomes maybe a little bit less smart if he's actually wanting 350 grand a week. If those reports are true, I'm not sure Tottenham do it. West Ham still need a striker, I think. I know Jared Bowen has put up plenty of minutes and goals this season. He's been amazing. But Mikel Antonio is not getting any younger. I'm suggesting Seru Jurassi because of that clause. 17 million euro clause. I thought it would be a smart bit of business for a team like Manchester United to sign him. I think it would be a smart bit of business for most teams in Europe. His expected goal numbers, his underlying numbers, exceptional this season. He had the dip around AFCON when he didn't score at AFCON. People thought, oh, he's just a half a season wonder. He's come back second half of the season and refound his form. His XG numbers hold out as they have for the last two or three seasons of his career going back to Ligue 1. There's no doubt in terms of forwards, these numbers here stack up as some of the very best in Europe. They really do. He gets a huge volume of shots off per game. He takes his shots from excellent areas in really good positions. He works hard off the ball. The clause is an amazing value. This would be a smart, smart pickup for West Ham. For Wolves, I wanted to look at some of the value in the market from some of those top teams leaving because of a lack of minutes. I've identified Eddie Nketiah as an option. Now, he's only scraped over a 1,000 minutes twice in his career. I think his best ever goal-scoring season was five, but I really think Gary O'Neill could take his career to new heights. Wolves have suffered badly with injury problems in the final third. They need more cover for the likes of Mateus Cunha and for Huang. And Ketia could be that cover. Don't think he's going to command a Balogun fee this summer, and that was a little bit less than we thought it was going to be. So could you get Eddie Nketiah for around £15 million? If that's the case... He'd be a smart pickup. He's only 24 years old, and I really believe Gary O'Neill could take his career to a new level. Okay, so that was one smart signing for each Premier League club this coming summer. Let me know what transfer your club should make in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. I'll see you later.